Doug has been in pavement maintenance industry for over 30 years with experience in placement, specifications, training, and educational platforms. Doug holds a general engineering license with experience contracting with the following products of asphalt concrete, slurry, micro, cape seals, scrub seals, rejuvenation seals, colon placement, and FDR. Yeah, so I, I want to start by telling everyone that it's just, I'm finishing my third year as a supplier representative and that the previous 30 years, uh, I started my career in 1982. I was uh, started from the ground up as a contractor, worked my way all the way to where I hold my own general engineering A license. Um, I tell people, especially my new clients, that I'm a recovering contractor. Okay, so I'm trying to get over it. And I want to mention that Larry, Larry's not here. I was going to tell him it was a process. Okay, so you have to give me time. I've been asked to come in and, and, and give a short uh, presentation on scrub seals. And I want to tell you, we've actually done three in the state of Montana this year. Big Mo, stand up, Big Mo. Oh, you don't need to stand up. You know Mo. <laughs> big Mo. Uh, big old teddy bear. Uh, Anyways, uh, Mo's been responsible for getting three actual demo sites done. You got another one coming up next year, right? Um, so if you're interested in attending and seeing this process live, uh, get with Mo because he's your lo one of your local representatives and please attend. I mean, there's, again, I'm gonna introduce this as a tool to you. I'll give you a short history. I apologize in advance. I'm gonna reference our family product called Paz. But I want you to know that this is actually made by other suppliers and they use different vernacular. In the state of Nevada, we use the vernacular PMPS, Polymer Modified Pavement Sealer. And we have different versions. We have a softer version and a hard version. Uh, so they just put an H on their specification. Uh, other states use the vernacular PMRE, Polymer Modified Rejuvenation Emulsion. The key here is it has rejuvenation properties. And I'll kind of break it down and show you what we what we do there. Um, basically a scrub seal <coughs> is where we mechanically use the broom prior to placement of an aggregate. We use a broom to force the emulsion down into open cracks. And there's a good picture of it. A chip seal, uh, basically the process is almost the same except it's not carrying that trailer behind it. You spray the oil, you place the rock, you do all your uh, construction methods, uh, you roll it, you sweep it, you fog it, depending on your spec. And so they're very close to being the same, the same applications. However, as you can see in that top, uh, top left hand side, the, we are mechanically driving that oil into the cracks. What is PAS? Okay, so again, this is our family name for our product. PMRE, PMPS, there's generic names. We understand the, the sensitivity of being proprietary, but just for uh, familiarity sake, I use the word PAS in this presentation. It's a polymer modified asphalt surface sealer. Uh, we use it as a binder, you know, for the aggregate chips, and it's really to uh, address the wide range cracking issues. It contains uh, really good binders. Uh, we have now, this is something new we've introduced, and I'll mention this in, at the end of my presentation a little bit. We are now starting to uh, introduce gilsonite into our binder. And what we're trying to do, like everyone, um, I started this in 82, as I think previous presenta uh, presentations mentioned. Back in 82, we had better binders. We had better molting configurations, better asphalt teens. We had more juice in the binder. We didn't modify. The first slurry seals I ever did, latex? Latex, just plug stuff up, we didn't use it. We had slurry systems that lasted 10, 12 years on their own. We had really good binders back then. Well now, guess what? You're in America, I don't really need to mention this, right? The gas companies are doing what? Squeezing more out of it, and that's the truth of it. So what we're trying to do as asphalt suppliers is put properties back into these binders and the finished product of emulsions. Gilsonite being one of it. It's a natural asphaltine, it's a mineral, and what it adds is it adds natural asphaltines and also uh, adds a tenacity to our binders. Okay, so it toughens the binder up a little bit. Uh, we use a solvent-free rejuvenation agent. 
we use what we call a Reclamite B. Now, how many, can I have a show of hands, how many agencies still use cutbacks? Why? My point is, why do you use cutbacks? Typically, cutbacks are used when you're dealing with priming base, doing dirt. I've chipped dirt roads with MC800. I've done it with MC70. I didn't really like it because I had to come in and do double course of aggregate because it was a little less, the viscosity was a little less. Um, the point is, fuel coats, fuel saturates, fuel doesn't mine dirt. You could take diesel in a park in a dirt parking lot, pour it in that dirt, it will coat it. It will stay there and it will stay coated. That's why cutbacks are popular in a lot of these regions. My home state, Nevada, they're very popular with a lot of counties. A lot of dirt roads in, in Nevada, so they're doing dust control. So they want to chip them. As the communities grow, they chip them because they can't afford to pave them, and then we use cutbacks. Rejuvenation, emulsion, or rejuvenation agents, the Reclamite B, is mirroring that same effect, okay? It's about coating. So we're, we're not using a fuel, we're using a, a more environmentally friendly system. It stays stable in our emulsions and it allows good coating. That's what we're after. Emulsifier. To do the scrub sale process, and I'm gonna give you a little bit of history. My dad started in this industry, uh, I've actually followed my dad. Now, sometimes I want to kick him, but unfortunately, uh, he'll kick back. Um, the point is that back in the old days, in the 60s and early 70s, emulsions were not that high quality. They used to use tall oils. They used to use tree resin type products to, as emulsifying packages. And the emulsions, especially for chip seal, were not that effective. So back in those days, they used to use brooms, and this is a true story, they used to use brooms not to scrub them into the cracks, they were just trying to even out the application of the oil to put the rock on it, and that's actually true. This is, the scrub seal is kind of taking a bend off that new, that old technology and applying it to cracks. So to make this happen today, in today's world, our emulsifying packages are way better than what they used to be. They're dramatically better and they're proving all the time. So this allows us to have a system. Um, how many people spec CRS, a uh, form of CRS-2P? You would not want to scrub a normal CRS-2P. The chemical package is too fast, all right? It'll build up on the brooms and it'll create a nightmare, all right? We use a package that slows down the system a little bit. We also, uh, what we prefer to do in our system is we use a polychloroprene. That basically it's a form of neoprene. There are EVA polymers, there's SBR polymers, there's neoprene type polymers. We like the neoprene because it doesn't break down with the rejuvenator. We have studies, in fact, I wish uh, Mr. Gary Hicks was here. We actually do a lot of studies with uh, uh, Chico State where we've actually proven that our neoprene has longer life than a, like an SBR, synthetic uh, a synthetic rubber latex and that's why we choose to use it so I'm gonna go through this really quick the pads started as a non-ionic is everyone familiar with anionic non-ionic cationic when it comes to emulsions okay the very first systems were non-ionic they were neutral this allowed us to do the scrub broom Okay, again, it wasn't fast chemistry. It didn't pick up on the broom. Uh, it's one thing to put it in the lab. It's another thing to put this products out 95 degree temperature. Your surface temperatures are now 130. Whole different applications. You need to have some real world experience. Um, and you need, to, you need to take that experience back to the lab and then we modify. And that's where I think Western does a very good job. The non-ionic was a little too slow. It relied on evaporation solely. It was too slow. So construction-wise, it held up a lot of these projects. I understand, you don't want to have this traffic control out. You want a certain time frame out there. I get it because that's why you put these specials together. That's why you put warranties together. You don't want your traveling public, you don't want 24-hour uh, traffic control on chip seals. It'd be a nightmare. So Western went to the new paths, which is now a, non, a, a cationic system. And it's not as fast as the CRS-2P type chemistry, but it is faster than non-ionic. And from there, 
we've been able to take this same technology and put it in rejuvenation fog seals and all the way into uh, uh, FDR, full depth replacement, and also into cold in place, cold in, cold in place recycling. Um, we have one of the better engineered emulsions and it uses this reclamite formulation. Again, about coating. Anytime you do these kind of processes, it's about dirt. Most emulsions do not like dirt. They don't like it. They, they repel against it. Um, everyone's seen these working curves and I'm not gonna get beat them up. Uh, I'm not <laughs> Basically, you start at 100%. You guys know you're trying to stretch the life of it and increase this working curve. The thing that I don't, uh, these are just normal uh, practices. Most people crack fill, they slurry seal. Um, the reason we put them in here is that scrub seal, again, is another tool to help you extend the life of existing pavements, okay? It's a tool. It's not the right thing to do everywhere. We understand that, but neither is slurry seal. Neither is rubberized crack filling in some cases. It all depends, right place, right product, right people, right time. Again, so we're just basically showing you with these PAS systems and these scrub seals that we're starting to extend, give you another tool to extend this working curve. I'm just gonna pop these up. Uh, the product uh, advantages to doing a scrub seal, again, you can eliminate crack filling. And again, it's the right road selection. I don't want, I don't want to leave you with it. Crack filling, uh, a rubberized crack filling is a great product. I've used it myself over my career. But this is a process um, that if you've got cracks, you have good structural underlayerment and it's surface cracks, this is a process that would help you eliminate all that crack filling, okay? Um, the benefit of our chemical package and our rejuvenators is we are uh, able to actually apply in cooler temperatures. Um, personally, I've laid it as, I put it down as low as 40 degrees with a high of uh, 58. I was able to get good cohesion. That's the other little thing I kind of was listening to previous presentations. So like CRS2Ps, some of these products, and as a contractor, we used to want fast. What does a contractor want? What's their goal? Get the job done, go to the next one. That's the reality of it. And we train these crews to move. Well, sometimes having a fast reaction on our chemistry is not a good thing in all cases. You can actually get some of the problems that I saw in those, those uh, previous presentations. You'll get spalling, you'll get bleeding. Um, sometimes slower cohesion or slower adhesion properties gives you longer life. And uh, we've, been, we've, been a, we've been able to prove that with this system over several years now. Um, also the high flexibility. Um, having this high 3.5% polymer loading gives us a huge elasticity ductility window. We're actually extending that out quite a bit. I was talking to John earlier. Um, I think our elasticity window is like in the 70s and above on this type of product. Um, the advantage of this product too is you can work with dirtier chips. You can't work with dirty chips with CRS2P. Chemistry is too fast. It doesn't like dirt. Well, uh, polymer, polymer modified rejuvenation emulsions don't mind a little dirt because we have the reclamite in there. And I mentioned earlier, Reclamite coats. So we're allowed to use some dusty chips. In some cases, if we have real high reclamite loadings, we actually use dustier chips as a rule. Uh, cinders is another thing. You can, I've seen successful cinder jobs with CRS2P and I've seen unsuccessful cinder jobs. Typically, these polymer modified system, polymer modified rejuvenation systems handle cinders very well and it's about the absorption rates. We get in there, the system coats and adheres very well. Um, here's just a little example of when they were starting to uh, chip um, and apply this product. We were, actually, we were actually doing in cooler temperatures. Now, I don't recommend you go out in 40 degrees and it stays to 41. But if you're in the 40s and it gets into the low 60s, we can actually make that work. Again, as a rule, do you practice that? Maybe not, but we have done some, uh, we have done some stretching of the process. 
basically, I'm not an engineer, I'm a pretty practical person, but basically what we are attaining here, and again, I wish Gary Hicks was here because they helped us do some bending beam test. By doing a scrub seal, uh, typical seals lay on top of the surface. They don't penetrate into the cracks, so you crack fill, you do a surface, uh, you do a chip, you do a slurry, you do a combo, they're laying on that surface. They're now not really bonding into the crack at all. But because of our system, or because of the specification now, and again, multiple people make this product now, uh, or their version of it, and uh, basically, we are driving our material into the cracks and still leaving the seals. So we're gaining some flexural strength in those cracks along with our top layerment. We are doing a T-type process. Um, I've been to a lot of craft code training. Right, they talk about the T. You want to put the, that little structural. You want to put it down in the crack. You want it bonding to the sidewalls, and then you have that T on purpose to give you flexural. Right. Well, the scrub seal does this in multiple, but in multiple areas. Again, um, our, we we uh, have some act, actual studies uh, working with Gary Hicks that shows that our reclamide is helping our bonding of this process to the sidewall of the cracks and uh, to the surfaces. Um, this is another little thing. By, by doing this, by driving this material into the cracks and by getting the top surface treatment all in one process, we are lowering our center of mass. So typically when we have a, a normal sealing operation, the center of mass is on the surface. By, by us driving our material into the cracks and all in one process, we're lowering the center of mass. Uh, the polymer, again, I'm not an engineer, but basically this is why we choose neoprene. Our neoprenes drive a reclamite down. They, they put, no latex penetrates anything. I don't care what latex you use. I don't care if you use asphalt rubber or natural or tire rubber in some of those hot, hot processes. It lays on top of the surface. It doesn't penetrate. So what we found, again, why we use a, a, a form of neoprene is because it doesn't break down with our rejuvenators. So our rejuvenators actually get pressed down into the system. Uh, scrub seals in a nutshell. This is actually a spreader. I uh, have a lot of vernacular for these units. Anyone know what a boot truck is? Back in the old days, they used to have a guy in the back of these machines that was called a boot man, so then they got called boot trucks. Now they're called distributors and spreaders. So I just want to make sure I cover all the vernacular. It depends on region. Perspective scrub seal candidates. Here you have a massive allocator crack area. You have block cracking. You have raveling. And then we've actually done some failed open grades. Again, if the subgrade's bad, anything you put on top of that's not going to fix the subgrade. Not even going to... What we're going to do in that kind of case, this top hand, right hand case here, uh, we're going to buy you time. We're going to buy you time. And that's what some of these processes do. They just buy time. Um, prospective seal candidates against minor distress, AJC, heavy oxidation, uh, climatic conditions. I was talking to Gary, and you missed my introduction, Larry, because I was telling everyone I'm a recovering contractor, but it's a work in progress. Okay, so I meant that for you. But anyways, the, the reality of it is, and I'm gonna just give my opinion on this, I've worked in a lot of zones. I've actually done microsurfacing in Montana. I've done chip sealing in Wyoming. I've worked in Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, California, Oregon and Washington, and I've done work in Alaska, Fairbanks, Alaska. Every environment, I, I just wanna counsel you here, not all specs are created equal. You don't just take the same cookie cutter mode and put it in all these areas. You wanna be careful with that. Um, slurry systems uh, can get very brittle and you put them in the right environment, they come right off the road, all right? Same with chips. You put too soft, and I'm gonna be honest, some of our technology, we put it, we've had to modify it because we've taken it down to Phoenix, Arizona, 122 degrees ambient. What's the surface temperature? 155, 160. We had to reformulate. We had to back the rejuvenators off, right? Not the right thing. However, that same process, that same spec taken up to Incline, Nevada, elevation 11,000 feet, worked beautifully. So I just want to leave you with that, that thought. Who doesn't know how many people paint their house without scraping the old paint off, right? 
If you do that, you're not doing your preparatory work, okay? The more prep you do in any of these maintenance programs, any type of preparatory work you do is going to gain you better value on the overall project. If you got failures, you should fix them. I don't care if you slurry, you scrub, you chip, you cape. I don't care if you do one inch overlays. You want to fix the bad areas. Whether it's crack filling, the more time you put in it, the better your process is going to come out. Applications to scrub seals. It's not rocket science. It really isn't. You want to clean the road, you want to prep the road, you want to do the patching. Um, this is a really effective tool for uh, punishment. Okay, so if you have some county or, or state crews that need some uh, uh, attitude adjustment, those brooms really do a bad job. <laughs> All right, uh, another thing to consider, uh, and I don't know if a lot of people know this, if you have fresh, fresh patching on your roadways, you should fog them. Now it's counter to what you're thinking because it's fresh AC, but the reality is compaction doesn't really happen in a lot of these patches. Okay, the contractor, off they go. Well, guess what, you have high air voids. If you chip over fresh patches 90% of the time, you're gonna have failure in those without fogging it. You're gonna have failure. Okay, you're just gonna have failure. So fogging is a really good suggestion on any live patches. The mechanical operation of this broom, the real trick to doing scrub seals, the real learning curve is with the distributor operator. We have to apply more emulsion in front of that broom than you would typically use to hold the type of chip. We are looking for 60 to 70, as high as 80% embedment on chips. We're looking for that. However, if you have a half inch chip and your spread rates are 0.45, now you want to hold that same rock with a scrub seal. You may be shooting half a gallon in front of this broom. And that's the learning curve that has to happen in multiple areas because it's something you have to learn to do. And the real trick here is, is that wave. We want that wave action. We want the wave action in front of those brooms because it is mechanically driving this material into the cracks. Okay, but then we want to leave a product behind that actually holds the rock. So it's a double-edged thing, but I just want to warn you, again, uh, we started this process up here in uh, Montana. We have two done. We're doing a third one to, in the spring. I, I really welcome you to hook up with Mo and get the time frame. If you can make it out there, you'll see what I'm talking about here. It is a real-world thing. Um, it's, it's something that the crew has to learn. The applicator has to learn. And once they get used to it, they get better and better at it. But hopefully that makes sense. We have to shoot more in front of this broom to leave the targeted emulsion behind for the rock. Now, same token, it doesn't take rocket scientists to understand if you got oil coming outside that broom, you may be too heavy for the surface that you're doing. However, it doesn't take rocket scientists to realize if you're not doing the full 12 feet of that broom, you might not be shooting enough oil. And that's some of the learning curve in this process. Well, let me go back. Here's one. We typically don't recommend this. Okay, so this is kind of a little, little test pattern we did just to see what would happen. These typically, when they're above half an inch or three quarters of an inch, we actually would go in and probably pre fill them with a little bit of crack filler. It's just the right thing to do because typically this process is not as fast as chip. Chip can be as high as 300 feet a minute. Right? Well, scrub seal's probably 150 to 175 feet a minute. So it's still a very quick process. So what we did here is we gave it a, an initial course. All right, we actually scrubbed it once. And we came back and scrubbed it twice. And we just wanted to evaluate this emulsion in these cracks. It was really about that. The agency was on board with it. They wanted to see what they could get away with. Uh, another little uh, um, real world, um, basically, I told you 50 to 70%, I've seen as high as 80%, depending on the type of rock. Um, just watching that small wave, making sure you got that oil, just the, the, the rock is creating that little movement in the oil. It's just a little uh, field trick, uh, making sure that you're not too thin on the oil. Because the reality is if you scrub a road and you don't leave enough oil to hold the rock, you won't know a lot of that until it's too late. Then you're going to get pictures such as Larry put up. 
Okay, you still have to have enough oil left behind to hold the rock that you're working with. Uh, this is all pretty standard. Rolling patterns are pretty much the same for a standard chip seal. I do want to I do want to mention that in some processes I've actually used steel drum, especially with these polymer modified rejuvenation emulsions. I've actually used steel drum, and uh, typically we'd have the fumatic rollers go first to get that fumatic action. And typical steel rollers are slower. So we would have them come in behind and we actually, uh, no, it was static mode. We didn't have them vibrate because some of those aggregates wouldn't hold up to it. But uh, basically just in static mode to go through and they would uh, roll out these chips and it actually helped our, uh, I think, I really truly believe it helped our uh, uh, retainage of that aggregate. Again, because we have rejuvenating, uh, we have a rejuvenator in these type of emulsions. You can, as long as you don't got a, get a lot of garbage, and you can, in some cases, reclaim your chips and reuse them. Now, if you have a lot of leaves and twigs and stuff like that, no, no. But if you got a pretty clean operation going on, you can actually reuse the chips. I'm not fibbing to you. Are these type of products don't mind dirtier, dustier chips. They don't mind it. Now, don't get me wrong. I had a contractor, okay, in this new role, I had a contractor. I could not see the chip machine. I was 500 feet in front of it. I could not see the chip machine. It had that much dust in it. The whole operation was so dusty, it could not see the chip machine. Needless to say, the contractor choked out the chipper. Right? Plugged up his air filter. Well, the boot truck didn't see it because he couldn't see the chipper and he went another thousand feet. He shot the oil. Contractor come up to me and says, what do you think we should do, Doug? <laughs> I'd put a rock on it and see what happens. <laughs> what are you gonna do now? I wouldn't shoot more oil. I'd actually put rock on it. They rolled it. I said I'd roll it maybe a few extra times, but it's gonna be a crap shoot. I was being honest. It actually is still there today, and it's actually on one of your roads in NDOT. <laughs> it actually worked. Uh, again, this process, this emulsion is slower. It's not like a CRS-2P that will not hold the rock. You can actually stretch that time. Another thing I wanted to mention about brooming. Another uh, mistake a lot of agencies allow, and I think that I uh, agree with your accreditation on contractors, a lot of young guys coming into this world sweep chips too much it goes with this product too it goes with conventional chips sometimes you want to kick that chip off and leave it alone okay because it hasn't cured yet everyone thinks because it dried that day it's cured in emulsions we have a break time we have a set time we have a cure time this works all the way to mixing operations like slurry and micro right to chips. When we shoot that oil, it's breaking. As soon as it touches the ground, as soon as you UV rays, that's the break. That's when it starts turning uh, from brown to black, right? It's starting to expel the water. The set time is when you can actually allow traffic to hit it, where maybe controlled traffic up to the point that you release traffic on it. That's the set. Cure, I've been doing this a long time. Cure. 30 to 90 days okay so I heard some evaluations stopping people early well I've seen that spec locally and Scott can help me out on this we have a spec in incline that doesn't allow you to chip or micro past the, uh, the end of August because the, re the they started realizing if we slurried or chipped to the end of September in Incline, Nevada, we could get snow the first week of October, the second week of October, the freeze thaw brittleized up the system, and then the plows hit it. It failed, and it failed massively. So there's a lot of areas now that are using these specials and, and timing when they do this process. And another one is this, this brooming. The guys get on it and they broom it too hard, they can actually do early damage to a chip seal and to a scrub seal. You want them to kick it off, make it safe for the traveling public, and then if they're going to hit it hard, you want the next day. That's the best time to really hit the hardest sweep. Okay? That's my opinion because I've seen it in practice. Um, a lot of agencies, no different than chips or uh, scrubs. Um, I personally like 
chips chipsets. I like to fog seal my chips. I just think it re, it quiets the road. It helps you retain that aggregate earlier, and it helps your delineation right off the bat. Again, recap. Um, a scrub room is basically a chip operation, except you have to get the, the working the working mechanics of working with that broom and how much oil you're actually leaving behind while filling the cracks to retain the aggregate. And then uh, from that point, after that point, it's a chip seal operation. Um, I'm just gonna mention real shortly that another tool, of how this tool has been used and it's been expanded on, is that we used it for inner layers or SAMIs or ARAMs for paving operations. Um, here's one I did in Clark County just last year. This is the uh, Paradise. Paradise runs right behind parallel to the Las Vegas Strip. Okay? Um, basically, they have a product, uh, they call it UTAX. It's really a variation of the Coke Nova chip system. It's a, that uh, polymer modified open grade bonded wearing course. Um, so they go through and they mill off their, uh, the distresses in the road and then they were crack filling it. The problem with that was, and again, um, crack filler is a great product, but in this particular case, because the contractor, they were stretching this out, he would grind the road, he would crack fill the deep cracks and then they couldn't put the UTAX on top of it because what was happening is the rubber was ballooning and swelling up through the UTAX because of the heat. So they wanted to look at a variation of a process where we could come in, scrub in the cracks, put a chip retention on it, and then they, uh, they paved over it. They're actually evaluating this right now. Again, we did it last summer and it's gone through one year, right? It's gone through one season and it's very promising to them. And they actually get an additional bonding to the UTAX. And if anyone knows UTAX, right, it's a spray paver. So we're do, we are, they did get a little additional bonding to this, uh, this milling operation. So they like that too. Um, again, we've seen AC, just straight AC applied over these scrub seals. Um, and I gotta be honest with you, I've done conventional chips too. I like the scrub seal process because we're trying to drive if you're trying to do a, a SAMI for a pavement, you want to drive material into the cracks. That's the benefit you're trying to get out of it. It's not about chip seal, right? A chip seal creates a nice uh, permeable water, main, uh, water membrane there, but the scrub seal actually drives it into the cracks. That's why I think it's a really good tool for some of these, uh, these overlay systems. Um, again, on our website, uh, life cycle cost, it's always about that. You evaluate what maintenance you do for life cycle cost, net present value, right? I mean, everyone has a different formula on how to apply this, but the reality is you paid for that investment. How do we take that investment to the point from point A to point B? How long can we stretch it? And this is just another tool to help you do that. Uh, I want to, they asked me to do case studies. Uh, I don't, we're beyond case studies. We've been applying uh, scrub seals for uh, going on past 15 years. And we have a lot of successes. And I will be honest, we've had some failures. And it was right, wrong place, wrong time. We just did a demo for ODOT. And I'm not afraid to mention it. Um, Western's gonna, we're gonna go back. We actually put it, one of our Gilsonite bonded, or binded, Gilsonite modified systems, and we put it down for a demo was, uh, uh, John and his team out in the middle outside of Bend, Oregon. Well, the binder was the, the emulsion, the residual asphalt content was too stiff. And also, we were using a high absorptive cinder, and it wasn't a small cinder, it's actually a big cinder. Um, I'm not going to say it's a total failure because we, we learned. We just had some problems that we weren't uh, aware of until after we did it. One was the ruts. We actually filled ruts with a scrub broom. Well, that, we don't recommend that as a rule, okay? But this particular binder that we made, or the formulation we made, looks like it's holding up in the ruts pretty good. What we failed on was the high sides, because these brooms have, as you see, these brooms, we actually have tension wheels that you put down to bring up the, the weight of the broom, because sometimes you don't want the full weight of the broom on the oil, it grabs too much of it. So what we did, we had to drop those all the way down into the ruts to bring the brooms up to leave enough oil to try to hold the chips. And that's what we're facing out there. So there's multiple things 
that uh, we learned on that demo. And we're going to go back because now we've learned from them and we're going to improve our process. And that's, that's what it takes. Sometimes it takes a little practice and error. We, didn't, we don't have a disaster, but it's not what I would consider 100% success either. And I want to get it to 100%. So currently, NDOT, my home state, um, I've actually done three scrub seals with NDOT this year alone. Last year I did five. NDOT's one of the biggest proponents of scrub seals uh, in the western United States. Um, Caltrans, we do quite a few scrub seals throughout Caltrans, okay? TxDOT, we introduced, this is our third year in Texas and we've done our third year of scrub sealing with them. Again, they don't do it everywhere, but they do use it as a tool. ADOT, Arizona, we have a plant in Tucson and they're actually down evaluating different polymer modified rejuvenation emulsions. They have a two week trial thing going on with multiple vendors, multiple contractors down in Yuma and we're part of that we're going to be applying products so they can evaluate these different systems. I mentioned ODOT, we're not done John, I'm coming back. And then uh, New Mexico and the last one I could put on here hopefully starting next year is MDOT, or, you know Montana because we're getting the county started and I really highly recommend you guys work with Mo and Sean and hopefully you can find some candidates to give it a try. Pick a small area, don't start big, pick a small area, evaluate it. That's the best way to, to do proven ground on these products. And I thank you. Thank you. Done. Any questions? Oh, I'm free. <laughs>